tooting. But I want to give you a basic background for a while. I'm doing IECL for last, uh, what, 23 years, started in 2000. Always have done bilateral together since day one. In fact, I did a lot of uh, my TORIC IOLs and such things together. Simultaneously, bilateral cataract surgery is also presented my series in ASCRS. And uh, I always wash through hole, maybe whatever number of ICLs I have done, 10,000 odd ICLs. White to white, we measure with three, uh, uh, you know, machines, Pentagam, IOL Master, and Caliper. And uh, if there is a huge difference, I depend on my Caliper, which is white to white and not black to black. And uh, ICL over IOL is actually cheaper if you are trying to implant uh, toric, if there's a you know, cylindrical error after the IOL implantation, because uh, ICL, for whatever power you buy, for whatever astigmatism is available, is cheaper than a sulcoflex in high powers and high astigmatism. So sulcoflex is a good option over the IOL. But, uh, uh, but the ICL is a very economic option. So that is what my take is. I wanted to comment it while the discussion was going on. And I'll start. So uh, you. You, everybody knows about the central fenestration in Ibo. And the major si safety concern is sizing and vault. And uh, excessive vault causes pupillary block, cell loss, pigment dispersion and elevated intraocular pressure, insufficient vault is for cataract. So uh, appropriate over, overall lens diameter is selected for implantation. And this sizing is very important. Sulcus to sulcus or white to white methods are, you know, there's a huge debate. But no methodology has proven superior to white to white based sizing in terms of predictability of vault. And sizing based on white to white and ACD remains the most popular and best study technique. And this is, I'm talking of the studies which have undergone in US. And uh, this study is called Post-Approval Study of Implantable Collamer Lens for my Myopia, PASS from MICL. And this was done by FDA and uh, studied in regard to incidence of cataract, elevated IOP, and endothelial cell loss. And this study, uh, did was done for 526 eyes of 294 patients and followed up to seven and a half years and including 334 eyes available for another five years. So after, at five years, risk of developing ASC, anterior subcapsular cataract, was 6.1% and developing a visually significant anterior subcapsular cataract was 1.2%. And also the other factor which are important were age and higher degree of myopia. And uh, especially the patient selection is very important. And uh, sometimes these complications are seen less in uh, if you have selected the right patient. Uh, central port helps to maintain the health of the crystalline lens. And no visually significant cataracts is observed in EVO ICL over a period of five years. This is the same study I am quoting done by the FDA. So uh, this is very significant uh, study for the ICLs. IOP incidence uh, was about 3.2% because of pupillary block and in immediate post-op period and mostly this block was because of viscoelastic and controlled immediately after YAG iridotomy. Retained viscoelastic causing increased IOP in immediate post-op period either resolved itself or 100% time resolved after the uh, irrigation. Endothelial cell loss, 144 eyes implanted with ICL for about three years, 6.46 decrease, percent decrease in endothelial cell density, and annual decrease of 1.2%, and expected age-related age loss of endothelial cell, cell was 0.6%. So uh, in fact, there is no coronal decompensation seen in uh, uh, ICL patients, and I have not seen any endothelial you know, decompensation in my own uh, cases of more than 20 years. Fluid dynamics, 
is uh, the the major major issue is for uh, the 360 micron hole which is there in the ICL in the center and uh, it is there to uh, you know prevent the cataract and maintain sufficient aqueous flow and there are optical effects which are negligible uh, because they disappear over a period of time mostly in about one to three months effectiveness is it is very predictable stable at 12 months the efficacy index was 1.04 percent and refractive correction of plus minus 0.5 diopter in 91 percent patient which is excellent result for any refractive surgery if you go back in time and uh, corrected visual equity uh, lost or gained with a weighted average follow-up of about 14 months 0.2 percent of I lost two or more lines while 95 percent maintained or gained and especially in high myopes you will find that after the ICL because of its uh, optical quality and optical positioning the there's always a gain of a line after doing the ICL implantation transient rise but no I had any elevated IOP after a month and cell density I have already talked so conclusion fake intraocular lens can provide optically superb correction relatively high degree of hematropia that lie well beyond the recommended range of keratorefractive procedures such as LASIK and PRK and especially along with the reversibility possibility this seems to be the best bet in the hand of a refractive surgeon high levels of post-operative uncorrective visual equity and uh, rate of ASC and pupillary block are very very minimal and very low and can be managed very comfortably and uh, broad range of refractive errors make EO an attractive option for surgeon and patient thank you very much thank you dr bharti for beautifully summarizing the visual outcome post uh, icl along with the evidences with this we conclude our instruction course sorry